John, wonderful to have you here at the Berlin School. Today we have the pleasure to uh, have here in our uh, uh, President's Lecture invitation uh, you presenting the book, The Art of the Idea. Uh, so it's very much focused on ideas. It's clear that is what our business is. But when I think about the ideas that I know from TBWA, like uh, Apple, Think Different, like uh, Absolute, in an absolute world, like uh, from um, uh, Adidas, uh, uh, Impossible is Nothing. When I think about uh, ideas from uh, your agency in uh, Johannesburg for the Zimbabwean, um, this, these are not just ideas. These are very special ideas. They have a standard setting quality, actually, for the business. So what's the difference between those ideas and ideas in general in our business? I think um, there's a number of ways to answer the question, but one of them would certainly be that I think better than most, uh, TBWA has been able to create an environment to allow those ideas to happen. Uh, we're not machines, we're people. So to get a great idea, I think you have to um, declare your intent that this is what you want. Interestingly, when we started Huntless Cars all those years ago, our motto was life's too short to be mediocre. So I think often by benchmarking yourself as a, a base principle, you say, you know, what we want is a game-changing idea. We don't want something that's appropriate or something that's good. We want something that's great. So it's becoming a business necessity to be uh, noticed, to, be a, to have a great idea. Now, in order to lead those game-changing ideas, I'm clear you not always find them, but you have developed some sort of processes that uh, enable or uh, make, make it more possible uh, that, that you find those ideas. Yeah. Um, probably the, the most, if I could call it, breakthrough over the last five years has been the development of what we call SWAT teams. Uh, in 2003, interestingly enough, I got all the information of all the awards that we had won over the last three years at TPWA. 85% of the good, you know, the top, top can awards, etc., came from our big clients. So we developed these SWAT teams where the best from around the world gather in one place and think globally about an idea. That allows you to get things like impossible is nothing because you know it's an idea that will fit the world. It's not a Japanese idea, an Italian idea, or a German idea. It's an organizing principle that the world goes, yes, that's appropriate for the brand. And it's a and universal hand, idea. It's a, a universal idea. And on the other hand, th it fits in perfectly with what the brand itself is trying to claim. The idea is only uh, actually an idea when it's sold. So how do you, how do you lead clients to those world-changing ideas which actually in its nature leave a norm so they are very hard to compare to the existing. I think there we also have a different philosophy and in truth um, maybe 10 years ago the client was seen as the enemy in the advertising world you know you came up with an idea and then you had to sell it to the client and if he was a bit like uh, the days of the chariot races you know the emperor would go yes or no and you had no say in it. Uh, what we try to do now is include the client much more. So if you take, for example, our SWATs, they normally run over a very intense five-day period. The client is in there on Monday. So they brief us, they see the team, they feel part of the team, and then we say, anytime you want to pop in, come and see what we're doing. You're going to see a lot of very tired people drinking a lot of coffee, but feel part of the process. Mm -hmm. My view is the more you can share the process as well as the end presentation yeah. with the client, um, the greater our strike rate. 
sounds a bit like ideal is, is it is developing. A the idea of having yeah. two people who think the same way or want to think the same way in the room is much healthier yeah. than having someone outside your tent. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, at the predetermined time, you bring them in and you try and sell them. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's confrontational. It's the client is put under a lot of pressure. Why not include them in the process? Now, uh, another aspect of the culture of TBWA, when you start with TBWA, it's Dragos, Bonange, Wiesendanger, Airoldi, and all those four people, they came from different expertises, if you will. So it was uh, yeah. client management, if you will, or brand management. It was research, media, uh, uh, and uh, you had creative. And they were all sitting together yeah, in one office. room, on uh, one office, in order to also begin to practice on top of the agency that you have to be very close yeah. together, including media. Yeah? Yeah, so is that still something yeah. you, you focus on? I think it's a wonderful template that when um, the T, the B, the W and the A first practiced that was probably 30 years ahead of its time. You know, the Harvard Business Review would call it cross-functionality at the management core. Yeah. It was a bunch of guys representing different disciplines, but trying to track down the same idea. Now, when it comes to decision-making, yeah, uh, it's not always that you ask a group, yeah, and then you have yeah. the... Com yeah, like Switzerland. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, who has the power to say, this now goes to the client? It's Switzerland, but in the end, there's an Ayatollah Khomeini. Interesting enough, the decision makes itself. It's very rare that you will have an argument about one or two ideas because through the process, the top one becomes self-evident. But if there is two great ideas, one of two things happen. First of all, we genuinely go to the client and say, we think we have two crackers here. These six people think this. These six people think this. Now, they're going to give you their opinion. They're going to give you their opinion. If that isn't possible to resolve it, then the executive creative director leading the SWAT says, okay, this is the way. So, I mean, there are three exciting things actually coming together. Uh, you have this SWAT team idea, yeah. then you have disruption, and you have media arts. Yeah. Yeah? How does it work in the combination? Yeah. Um, very simply, which is why I think it works. Disruption is the methodology we use to strategically find the way forward. What we're trying to do now is, after the disruption week, as soon as possible, to have the SWOT. Because you've cleared the thinking, and there's a very clear strategic way forward. And then within two or three weeks, yeah. if you can have the SWOT, it's, that's the perfect solution. Sometimes yeah, yeah. not possible. Yeah. Once you've had the SWOT and you have the creative idea sorted, media arts is the way we articulate that. And in the old days, it would have been, you know, let's look at the media schedule. Now, media arts is a completely different way of, of looking at that. Media is everywhere and anything, and it's much more about brand behavior than ticking the boxes for, you know, how many people will we reach if we go for TV, et cetera, et cetera. You have the joy also to, to work with some great people together. I mean, Lee Clow, for instance. Yeah. Yeah? Great. I mean, what, what is it like? Yeah. You know, Lee is one of a kind. Uh, what Lee always reminds us is to be authentic. He's been around for a while, but he's still the same cre young creative in inverted commas that he was, you know, 30 years ago. Mm. So it gives the whole network a compass. Would you agree that uh, the key to better work also is that the chief creative person is close? to a CEO of yeah. a company. I mean, uh, there yeah. is the, the word that Lee Clow meets yeah. on a Wednesday, uh, Stephen Jobs, Correct. and yeah. that has become a tradition. Yeah. And this is actually something, it's very unusual yeah, and mostly not done, and mostly the, the chief creative people, they even shy away from this kind of, and hand it over to somebody else. I think as the world evolves, and as uh, CEOs, and dare I say, even the financial directors, begin to understand the real currency, the real, real currency of value these days is an idea. 
they will open more to that. It's not a coincidence that Apple is so um, well-oiled as a brand. Of course, you're lucky to have Steve Jobs as the CEO. He's you know, a genius in his own kind. But the way that that LA office works with that client, the way they worry about everything from you know, the plastic packaging that goes you know, on the lid on top of the box to how Apple itself designs products, it's about the most seamless relationship I think I can think of in terms of client and agency, but built on trust right from the top. It's more and more important that we learn to collaborate with each other, maybe even amongst our ad industry, but certainly with other industries, with other communication industries yeah. like film, like entertainment and so forth. Where, uh, how do you see that? How, how do you lead this? Yeah, I think that's probably you put your finger on the biggest change over the next five years. It's already happening, but the idea that we can be siloed is really 15 years out of date. We have to collaborate because the ideas exist at intersections of other ideas. And um, the, in truth, the clients are asking for us to come up with an idea which might have a completely different media focus than in the old days. So we better understand about movie making, events, digital design, whatever, um, because a lot of ideas are going to be end up articulated there. Do you have already an exciting example from, from this area? A great example would be what the guys did in LA recently for Gatorade. They came up with an idea called Replay. They took two famous college um, competitions from 15 years ago, which ended in a draw. They got everyone together again and they replayed that match with replay, of course, being drunk all around, replay sports instructors making sure no one had a heart attack, etc., etc. Sold the tickets, 15,000 sold in you know, a nanosecond, filmed it, that became the content. Now, um, DreamWorks, Paramount, etc., etc., are asking Gatorade for the film rights to make a movie of the replay story. Hmm. So that just shows you, you know, and of course that was digital and blah, 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 but it just scatters like a spider's web. When you have a great idea, you can't keep it in a box. Final aspect is uh, your, let's say, social role in, in, in your community in South Africa. I mean, you're very much engaged in, in, in education. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Um, I think not just in South Africa, where obviously, um, given our history, we are more obliged to um, have a social conscience, but I think all over the world now, and maybe it's got something to do with the economic meltdown, I think agencies should feel a genuine obligation to help society. And um, what we've done collectively as TBWA is um, we've started an initiative called Room 13, where we go to disadvantaged areas and we give children uh, what is essentially a art studio. We build it for them, or it might be pre-existing as a, um, a classroom. But the unique thing is the children run it. So they become their own management team. They choose the uh, artist in residence. And once we give them the seed money, they have to sustain it. So while they can learn all about arts, develop their art skills in music, storytelling, visual arts, they also become entrepreneurs because come the end of the month, they've got to work out, I need money for paint. Your role in, in Mandela? Yeah. yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, that was a, a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, I still remember there was a, a late afternoon, there was literally a knock at my office door, and my assistant said, There's someone in reception to see you. And there was a, a man called Popo Malefi, I'd never met, and he had a very battered leather briefcase, and he came in um, with this kind of 1950s suit, and he said, uh, I have a request, and I said, um, Mr. Mandela would like uh, you to do the ANC campaign, you know, and I, you know, Reg and I nearly fell off our chairs, you know, can this be true, we almost looked for, is there a <laughs> camera, you know, and that's how simple it was, so yeah, yeah. Um, we obviously had a you know, few many occasions to meet with him and, and those were crazy wonderful days because you met with one of those rare people who yeah. in 
the media he was so hyped up, you presumed when you were going to meet him in person, no one could live up to that. And he was better. It's always great when you climb a mountain and when you're on top. Yeah? I mean, you've been named several times Agency of the Year in your country. TBWA in the last decade, I mean, always playing in the top three. And so, I mean, how do you keep it up? It's a bit like Manchester United. If you can be successful and then say, okay, let's make this a habit. Um, you have, we have a lot of very good people who seem to want to stay at the top. In the end, it's, it's the people. Um, we've been very lucky that um, we've had, I think, good leadership. I think in the end, uh, people are now attracted to TBWA because of what it stands for. So we are often getting, I wouldn't say always the pick of the bunch, but you get people who are coming to say, I want to be at the top. Yeah. I'm very happy to work very hard. I'm very happy to um, put in the extra mileage. So that's the circle of the beauty yeah, of, of, of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. The idea yeah. creates the fame for the agency, creates the fame for the brand, for the clients, exactly. and for the people that, that are involved. Yeah. And at the end, it's a people business. Yeah? It's a so. people business that, if you manage it with integrity, it's a virtuous circle. Yeah. Um, but that does not mean it's easy. Well, yeah. In building our place here, uh, it's a people business too, and it is so great to have yeah, you here yeah, in Berlin. Thank you. Thanks so no, much. Thank John. you. Yeah? Thank you.